Welcome ladies and gents, this is Sonora Design and today is going to be the best day ever because we're finally on video number two of Talking Crossovers. guys so today we are finally on video number two of talking crossovers and on video number two we're gonna get from where we stopped on video number one talking about components capacitors resistors and inductors we're gonna talk about series and parallel connections we are gonna try those components in real life we're gonna add them to the path and see how they change the sound on real speakers we are gonna talk about slopes crossover slopes attenuation first second third fourth order crossovers I guess that's all it's a lot already let's move on guys hmm. all right guys so what do we use to separate the frequency capacitor cut low frequencies and we have the inductor cut highs so we have our graph again and we're going to cut our frequency at 2000 which is 2 kilohertz that's our crossover point we're going to cut the frequencies from the drivers at 2 kilohertz okay or start cutting because we have this slope we're going to talk later this driver here is gonna play from 20 Hertz and you're gonna like keep playing and then at 2 kilohertz it's gonna start going down why because we added uh, we added an inductor so it's cutting the highs it doesn't go all the way to the highs and guess what our tweeter is gonna start playing the highs why it doesn't play the lows because it's cutting the lows we are using a capacitor for that how do we represent a capacitor uh, in the matrix a capacitor looks like this okay you need to know that because this is how it's going to look in our cr crossover software or everywhere every like schematics crossover diagram you're going to have those symbols okay so remember that and guess what we have the in inductor how does it look it looks like a coil and guess what we use resistors to control all that and resistor it's like a it's resistive thing whatever so it resists it blocks the whole uh intensity of audio all the way it doesn't cut lows it doesn't cut highs it works like to attenuate audio signal resistors as well and a resistor representation works kind of like this in the software we're gonna have capacitor a coil and we're gonna have a resistor that might look like this we, we're gonna mix all those components and we're gonna figure out like soon how do they work and what do they do into our audio path uh, I just want to add some stuff that we're gonna talk about during the video I want to read something for you so you guys can understand I'm not a, I'm not an electronic or electrical engineer so that's Douglas Blake's definition I think he got as simple and easy as he could get a resistor is a component that exhibits a constant impedance at all frequencies okay impede uh, it won't let it pass it blocks okay a capacitor can be seen as uh, a resistor whose impedance decreases as frequency increases the impedance decreases so it blocks the lower frequencies a coil can be seen as a resistor whose impedance increases as frequency increases so it'll block higher frequencies let's talk about series and parallel connection let's say we have like a tweeter here and a woofer and we want to connect to an amplifier with a positive and negative so we get the positive to the positive of the tweeter and this positive goes to the positive of the woofer the negative goes to the negative of the woofer and then we got to the negative of the tweeter this is a parallel connection another way to illustrate that would be if we have like 
one driver here and another driver here and an amplifier here positive going to the positive negative going to the negative and we connect the negative of the tweeter to the negative positive to the positive so at the end this is a parallel connection then we go to components we have the speaker driver here and we add a coil this is a parallel connection and we add a capacitor uh, this capacitor is connected in parallel and we connect a resistor this is in parallel pa ra la okay let's move on and uh let's see how does a series connection works a series connection would be ay 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 calling sean home <laughs> siri no don't call damn it okay series <laughs> See, it's not Siri, it's Iris. Can you stay quiet? Thank you. Okay, series connection. Then you connect negative to the positive and the negative of the woofer goes back to negative. So it's kind of a loop. Goes connect to the positive of the tweeter, negative, positive, negative, back. We will have to remove this tweeter from here. And the connection will be more like positive, Woofer, negative, positive, tweeter, connects here and back to the amplifier. It makes like a loop. Guess what? We can't have those components here. So we have to remove all those components here. And we have to add components uh, in series to the speaker. So we can add like a capacitor here. Or we can add uh, a coil and we can add a resistor. Those are all in series, okay? It's a series of components. Uh, I didn't get that. Could you try again? Damn it, Siri. Mm -hmm. Can you please stop? <sighs> There's nothing to stop here. Check if the device is on your home Wi-Fi network. Mm. I'm asking you to be quiet. Okay, I found this on the web for I'm asking you to be quiet. Check it out. This is ruining my video. Series connection. This is good to know because, uh, I mean, you don't always have the option to send pic 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 pictures or a graph or a diagram. So if you're writing it out, you write like, hey, connect this capacitor in series and you know, whoa, psh, here, capacitor in series and add a coil in parallel, coil, psh, parallel, okay? So you know what we're talking about. We're going to talk about crossover orders. I'm gonna say we have a, a capacitor in series to, this, to the driver. This is a first order crossover. Let's say we have like a, an inductor here, a coil to the woofer. Uh, this is a first order filter. Uh, so it's one component series, one component series. But guess what? If I wanna add like a resistor here or a capacitor here, or if I wanna add components here, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change a thing. It's still a first order filter. First order. Read it. Okay, now we're gonna go to second order. Let's say we have, we add a coil in parallel. Now we got a second order filter. It doesn't matter. I can add more stuff here, more stuff here, more stuff here, more stuff here. This is serious, this is parallel. This is a second order crossover. Now, what, what, what can we do to make this a third order? Third order. I'm gonna break this down. I'm gonna add another capacitor here. Add another coil here. This is a third order filter. What's the attenuation here? Uh, 18 dB per octave. Guess what? I forgot, but the first, first order is 6 dB per octave. Second order, 12 dB per octave. Third order, 18 dB per octave. Fourth order, 24 dB per octave. Maybe, maybe not. Then I decided to add another capacitor here uh, and another coil here. What do we have? A fourth order filter. It attenuates at a ratio of 24 dB per octave. So I just wanted to show that real quick. <laughs> it's not quick. We have a graph here first order filter then we have a second then we get like a third order here and then we get a 
fourth order here. My markers are horrible, but you can see it changes the slopes, okay? Because the attenuation ratio changes. This is fourth, third, second. I'm glad I'm done because those markers, they don't work anymore. All right, guys. So, so I have here a capacitor. I have the audio grade capacitors. I have all kinds of capacitors. I have like smaller capacitors and they're measured in microfarad. Voltages run from like 100 to 4, 6, 800, I don't know. The thing is that we have coils too, or inductors. And those are measured in millihenries. Then we have like resistors. We have this kind of resistor. <laughs> and we have this kind of resistor. Those are like different styles measured in ohms. I want to play a pink noise, which is a noise that emit frequencies from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, the full spectrum of frequencies. You guys are going to hear the difference here those components make on this speaker, okay? This is a full range and a woofer. This is a 2.2 microfarad capacitor. Let's play it. You guys notice the difference? Uh, we cut all the low frequencies, okay, off the speaker. So it was playing the just like higher frequencies, okay? That's what a capacitor do. I'm gonna play it again, and now we're gonna add an inductor, a coil. I have a two milli Henry uh, coil. Did you guys notice? So we have less highs and more like woofer sound, like lower frequencies. So that's uh, what a coil and a capacitor do in a sound. The thing is, if you're like me and you want to experiment, you're probably going to try and make other connections. We can add a capacitor in series and an inductor in parallel and see what happens. Now we add a capacitor to a coil and we're gonna do some tests, okay? Okay, let's see what happens. Did you guys notice? The thing is, uh, we are starting to change the slope. So how inclined is our cut? If it's like uh, gonna be like a little, like a slant, or is, is it gonna be like a steep slope, okay? If we do the inverse, I'm gonna go back. We have now a coil. I'm gonna play the pink noise. I'm gonna do like full range. I'm gonna do coil and I'm gonna do coil and capacitor. I'm gonna show you guys that on the board soon, but let's listen to it. Full range. Coil. I'm gonna add the capacitor. Oh, look at the difference. We are gonna go back to the board so we can start working on making a crossover. <sighs> Let's move on, guys. It's getting too complicated. All right, guys. So I'm back to the board. And now that we listen, we hear what those components do, we're gonna write it down so we can memorize or remember it forever. We had an amplifier here we added a capacitor here for the tweeter frequency response graph we're talking we're talking about a two-way crossover now okay high frequencies low frequencies so we have 20 hertz 20 kilohertz and we have two kilohertz that's our cutting point the tweeter play from at around 2 kilohertz and all the way to 20 kilohertz okay that's a curve frequency that we got for the tweeter then we did a another amplifier and then we had a capacitor 
and we added a coil remember that we added a coil here still our tweeter so what happens when we do that and 20 and we have our cutting point this happens the difference is the slope here you see that this cut it's, it's still like inclined this one is more like accentuated so we made a second order crossover here because there are two components and this is a first order first order crossover second order crossover what does it change the the slope okay so we have more components we get a second order cross order crossover we have like a better cut and that's what we're going to work uh today okay second order two-way passive crossover so we stick to something because otherwise it's a lot and then what did we do we got the woofers and plug to the same amplifier and what did we use for the woofer a coil yay so we have a woofer it's a it's a large driver and it plays low frequencies what happened to the graph we had 20 hertz all the way to 2k and start cutting see the attenuation is different from the second order crossover then we had another amp all right guys this is just a representation like the the curve this i want to show you guys that how does a second order crossover work that's the second this is a first okay so when we add a capacitor with a coil for the woofer the slope gets more inclined more steep uh, if we add just a coil the slope is just like a little inclination it's it takes more time more distance to attenuate so this one attenuates at a ratio of six decibels per octave this one goes to 12 decibels per octave and we have the third order which attenuates at 18 decibels per octave and fourth order which attenuates at 24 decibels per octave anyways there are other factors that uh might change here the software is going to tell us uh what's going on with that we're going to add the values and we're going to find out what's happening but for now guys this is what happens we add a capacitor we cut the base we add a capacitor and a coil we cut the base but we cut it better i mean cut it more same thing with the coil cuts the highs coil and a capacitor it cuts the highs but a little more efficient does it mean it's better i don't know you're gonna tell me later because i mean if you use one component one simple component like a single capacitor it might not affect the audio signal that much if you start adding more components and components and components and shunting and plugging a bunch of components yeah you can get to a perfect flat curve but at the cost of maybe sacrificing the the the, the audio signal especially if you don't use like high quality components okay because they can affect the audio a lot you're gonna talk about that later but it doesn't matter i don't know all right guys so we got to the end of video number two i really appreciate you guys all that are making this channel grow i really appreciate your presence here in the channel that's something that i really enjoy doing and i apologize that i disappeared uh for a while i've been very busy i've been working a lot so i get to fill up the magic closet with more crap that's gonna sit forever waiting for the next project <laughs> all the links you need are gonna be on the description down below so go on the description down below and download whatever you need to learn more about crossovers and if you guys want to go deep on it just do your own research okay there's a lot of material i'm gonna post down below so you guys keep uh researching your own way this is an introduction and i hope it helps uh if it doesn't mm, i don't know mm. is it dripping it's raining so much in la it's raining a lot actually all right we don't care let's finish the video anyways thanks for watching and i hope to see you guys soon